Hey everyone, this is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at chaintuts.com. And today we are once again talking about the topic of scams. And in particular, we're going to be talking about fake investment scammers. Now, fraud like this is fairly common and fairly well known, but scammers can be sophisticated and insidious. So I wanted to take some time to show you more specifically what this kind of scam can look like and the lengths that scammers go to to at least try and appear legitimate at first glance. I spent some time getting worked on by a fake investment scammer that talked to me over LinkedIn. And so I'm going to be showing you this specific example uh, using this fake person and their fake website and some of the different things that you can look out for. This all started off with getting a cold contact on LinkedIn. So an individual connected with me and simply messaged me to say hello. Uh, this is often a first red flag. Now, LinkedIn is a legitimate platform to do business on, but uh, when somebody contacts you and starts asking you about passive investment opportunities or something like that, chances are pretty good that they're not helping you out of the goodness of their own heart. When somebody gets in touch with you in a cold contact manner like this, this is somebody that you don't know, uh, many times they are trying to sell you something or outright scam you, as in this case. Now, one of the things that was a little bit more insidious about this scam that I noticed is I actually just initially called this person out and said, this is an obvious investment scam to me. Come on, dude. And he sent me links to verify how legitimate he is so that I might actually believe him. This individual used the name of a legitimate investments professional and showed some of their, a link to some of their uh, official licensing credentials. Now, this wasn't really the person that they said they were, but this is something that you can look out for. And he also showed me links to a legitimate company uh, and, and some articles about this company in Bloomberg. So, there, uh, he showed me a, a link to this, this company's uh, credentials as well. And I'm not a finance professional, so if I'm getting any terminology about licensing wrong, I do apologize. But uh, in the US, apparently this company has been registered as a you know, financial and securities company since 2005. Funnily enough, when I checked the, the fake website that they were using, it said the company had only been in business since 2018 in the UK. So that is again something that you can look out for, is look and see what the, their fake website that this person is leading you to says about when the company was founded, and try to match it up with any real or legitimate documents you can find. You're probably going to find some red flags. So this person led me to a fake but very legitimate looking modern website. This website had a modern layout, modern look and feel. Uh, it used HTTPS and TLS because you know a lot of people these days are fairly aware that you know if you go to some financial website and they're using plain HTTP, that's a big red flag, and that is, that is something that you should look out for. This person said that I simply need to sign up for an account on the website and fund my wallet. So I went ahead and signed up with a fake email, fake name, and, and all those sorts of things. Uh, I used Mailinator, which is a free service for uh, mailboxes that are useful for this kind of security research purpose. And he told me to fund my wallet. You know, I actually even told him, hey, I'm a you know, professional in the Bitcoin space. Uh, you know, I use Bitcoin. He said, oh, well, we accept Bitcoin as payment. Well, it turns out Bitcoin is the only deposit option for funding this account. Now, although as a Bitcoin professional, I am hoping to see worldwide adoption of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies uh, for goods and services, at this point, this should also be a red flag to you. Uh, most legitimate investment companies like a Fidelity or a Vanguard don't even accept Bitcoin as a way to invest funds into uh, you know, any of the securities that they offer, and they certainly don't offer Bitcoin as the only option. And the very specific reason that they are using cryptocurrency only is that cryptocurrency transactions are irreversible by design. 
So unlike a bank transfer or a credit card where you may at least have some recourse to get your money back, uh, depending on what you know their fraud department determines, with Bitcoin, you are completely out of luck. I was given what actually turned out to be a reused Bitcoin address, and that was kind of interesting to me too. So I could see that uh, on one or two occasions, somebody unfortunately did fall for this fraud, and that scammer made some money with that address. Now, when I looked into the withdrawal part of this website, I, I did some digging into the actual code that I could see on the client side and some of the requests that this website makes to the server. And as far as it appeared to me as an engineer, the withdrawal form pretty much always does nothing. So you'll either put in an amount that's too low, so you're below their minimum withdrawal uh, amounts, or maybe you're above their maximum withdrawal amounts, or I'm assuming that if you did really put money in, the form might say something like your funds are locked at this time. Right, no matter what, this doesn't actually do anything real on the back end. It just submits a form and does some basic logic to give you some legitimate appearing message, which is some reason why you're not going to be able to get your money. So, uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. And I also thought it was interesting that uh, they want to ask, they want a proof of deposit once you uh, put their money in. So uh, I told him, since they reused a Bitcoin address that had some other transactions, I just took a screenshot of a previous transaction on a block explorer and sent that to the scammer as proof that I had deposited funds into their fake accounts. Now, lo and behold, not two minutes after I told him that I had deposited money into this account, which I actually did not, that person's LinkedIn page completely disappeared. I, I couldn't send them a message, they were gone forever. And this is the nature of this kind of scam. Uh, this person is masquerading as a legitimate investment professional, and all they're going to do is use the irreversible, secure nature of cryptocurrencies to take your money and run. So I thought it was interesting to see some of the more uh, some of the deeper specifics about how these websites look, how these scammers operate, and red flags that you can look for that may not immediately stand out to you. Scammers do this for a living. It's a bad living, but it's a living. And so they do spend some time and effort trying to appear legitimate, at least at first glance. So make sure you take your time. Uh, it, it, when you're you know, dealing with your Bitcoin. Remember, in general, don't give your Bitcoin or cryptocurrency to anyone else. These scammers prey on fear of missing out and excitement about cryptocurrencies as a possible investment opportunity. They all say that they're going to give you outrageous profits in a short amount of time. The true value of cryptocurrencies is that you get to hold your own money without having to trust anybody else. So don't go chasing profits blindly. If you want to get in the crypto space, buy some cryptocurrency and hold it yourself in a safe, secure wallet, like a hardware wallet. And remember too, cryptocurrency transactions are irreversible by design. These networks are designed this way for maximum security, but this does have the downside that if you're defrauded, you have no recourse. So always double, triple check who you're sending money to and what you're sending money to. Well, I hope you all stay safe out there and I hope you found this tutorial on fake investment scams interesting and informative. In terms of recourse, I don't exactly know what I could do yet to help take down this scammer. I did take a look at the who is registration and found that the fake domain that they are using is through Namecheap, and so I'm hoping to report that to them and actually get the website taken down. Again, don't fall for scams like this. Pay attention, be careful, and hold your crypto yourself. I hope you found this interesting and informative, and thanks for learning something new with me today.